All right, ready? Let's go. Hey guys, before we get into it, I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Dinnerly. Dinnerly is a weekly meal subscription service that makes dinner time easy and affordable. And the process is really simple. You just select the meals that you want each week, they send you all the pre-packaged and measured ingredients, and the easy to read recipe card so you can just follow along. You can choose from over 100 recipes each week, and the best part is it actually is just the recipe. No long paragraphs and backstories, just quick and concise instructions with pictures. A few of the meals that we made were cheesy Juicy Lucy burgers, chicken Kima curry, and pastrami crusted steak. And I can honestly say that each one of them tasted amazing. And while it was more than enough food for two people, because everything was prepackaged and measured, there wasn't any wasted food. It's easier than meal prepping, cheaper than eating out, and it's more convenient than going to the grocery store. Because going to the grocery store sucks. And if you're not satisfied, you can cancel at any time with no penalties. And we have a special discount for my audience. You can use the link in the description or use my coupon code MADDIE150 and get $150 off your first five boxes. And free shipping on your first box. So make dinner time easy, delicious, and affordable with Dinnerly. And now, on to the video. Hi guys, welcome back to Give It To Me Straight, where the conversations are never a chop, but sometimes YouTube ad monetization is. On the show today, we have an artist who is on Drag Race Season 9, All Stars 3, and Legendary Season 3. It's Aja! Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you for that entrance. <laughs> Setting the tone. I'm here! Okay, listen. People kept saying, you need to go on... Maddie's show, and I was like, well, I'm not important enough, girl. Mm -hmm. And here I am. Mm -hmm. Still not important enough, but I'm here. We're, we're a nonprofit. We're like a charity. So, you know, we reach out <laughs> to those that are less fortunate. <laughs> so, first, I'm a dying robot. I'm a barb. And now I'm less fortunate. Got it. Mm -hmm. We were well, really setting the tone for yeah. today. We'll tack on some more adjectives and nouns for you. So, you'll have a full, like, description whenever you leave here today. You're going to be like... <laughs> Yeah, but, but with your name, I, I just use the mononym Aja because I know you go through, uh, you, you change your name like you change your panties, so I don't, I never know what it is at any given time. It's currently Miyaki Mugler, right? That's yeah, the it's current? It's very generous of you to assume that I am changing my panties. <laughs> That's awful. It's, it's, a, it's a, tur a turn of phrase, you know? Yes, I mean, my name is actually just Aja, but like... Okay, because I'm in ballroom, when you're in a different, when you go from like, let's say you leave a house, mm -hmm. obviously you're not carrying the last name, you kind of drop it like a burden, so. Mm -hmm. You should collect them all, just have an all star name. No, together. see that's so messy, like, I mean it's already like, you, you know what they do when you get deemed legendary in ballroom, they give you a plaque, it has a list of every house you've ever been in. Oh wow. So like, some people are like, you know, let's say Maddie's been a house hopper, <clears throat> it'll be like, Maddie, Morphosis, Jones, Sanchez, De La Cruz, Miyaki Mugler, 007. Like, it's, it'll be very much that. That actually was going to be my ballroom name. It's so crazy that you just, like, said it out loud like that. I love it. You look like a De La Cruz. Thank you? Question mark? <laughs> I'm not familiar enough with ballroom to know if that's a compliment. But you're familiar with the Bronx. No. <laughs> we established <laughs> earlier. I, it's, I don't know anything about the bureau. The, the, the bureaus. <laughs> the, the bureaus. <laughs> the boroughs. You know, the different you know, areas of the bureaus York. that makes uh, New York sound so fancy, fancier than it is. Like, that's the gossip girl, New mm. York. <laughs> See, we I live in just like the trash New York. Yeah, you like you have boroughs, upstate has bureaus. Yeah, but we don't go there, we don't go to Yonkers. No, can't no. afford it. The Uber's too much. Whoa, 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 whoa. So generous of you to assume I'm taking an Uber to Yonkers when the Metro North is like two dollars, <laughs> right? Well, you could take Lyft because you got that sponsorship, right. I'm banned from Lyft. <laughs> Wait, I thought you did the sponsorship after the... I did! Oh. But I'm banned from Lyft because my best friend in the middle of the pandemic... Um, okay, so we all had that one friend that you couldn't send them off anywhere because they would, like, take their mask off halfway into any conversation. And mm. she just kept uh, being like, Ma, can you call me a car home? And then, like, would take off her mask halfway in the ride. And then they kept reporting me. And then I got banned from Lyft. Damn. So you simultaneously had a sponsorship with them. You were a spokesperson for Liv while not being allowed to use their services. Pull up in the Priyanka. <laughs> Cause yes. <laughs> Pull up in the Metro. <laughs> Pull up in the Metro. Pull up in the subway. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to recollect them all, like how many last names has Aja had? Both in drag, ballroom. Fuck my life. Cause we um, have like Miyaki Mugler, 007, uh, LaBeja. La um, uh, injection. 
Yes, Marie Vontis. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh my God, there's also my first drag names, like Sindel. Sindel, sounds like a Mortal Kombat character. Yeah, it was. Um, Did she also have like gray hair? There was also Katana, Mm -hmm. who's also a Mortal Kombat character. Um, But then I don't know. So my name wasn't even... Okay, so I have this bullshit story that I tell... I told like the drag race people to make my life sound interesting. But like the truth is... I actually just came up with Aja because um, my name was supposed to be Asia, but spelled A-J-A, but everyone kept saying Aja. So I was just like, whatever. So that whole story that everyone knows about your drag name being like something about from a Bollywood. Oh, and... bitch, I made that shit up, girl. Like, I was just like, how can I make this sound interesting for like my audition tape? Mm-hmm. And then like, I just took it around with it. I mean, that's why in my Meet the Queens, I'm like, I don't know what it means. But then somehow in my audition tape, I know what it means. It's because the whole story was bullshit. <laughs> See, everyone's going to take this interview with a grain of salt now. Because yeah, you've now established that you're a compulsive liar. So. Yes, I'm a scammer, a compulsive liar, and you love it. She's just kidding. She's, no, she's, she is a scammer. <laughs> she is a scammer, but she's not a compulsive liar, so. Listen, I, I scammed the world with Facetune once, mm-hmm. and I'll do it again. <laughs> but talking about ballroom, if I were to walk ballroom, other than LSS, of course, and Sex Siren, what do you think I would walk? <laughs> What do you think I would get my tins in? Um, I think that, um, honestly, mm, I don't know. Assume it's a dimly lit ball. You want me to say you're real so bad, but I don't think it's giving real. Maybe like real crazy, but like not like. No, you don't know. You think you think because you watch Legendary, you know ballroom. You don't know nothing. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Wait, no, I feel she's like she's not that stunning. <laughs> oh my god, she said, "I am ballroom." <laughs> Wait, I want to give you a category. I feel like you would do no. Maybe like best dressed, like best dress. Yeah, there's like best dress in, in the like, Santee Alley. <laughs> Maybe not in this outfit, okay, okay. but like, you know, because this is giving very like, this is, I mean, this is like a realness outfit. Like, this is giving realness, but the mm-hmm. only thing that's like not real is your face. <laughs> thank, thank you for putting it kindly and letting me down so easily. <laughs> it's not that you, it's not that you look bad. It's just that like, I would never look at you and go, oh my God, wow, a woman. Like. I said it was dimly lit. Baby, the lights could be off. I, I feel like I'm softer than you're giving me credit for. No, you are soft. You are con. Thank you. But listen, I don't know what you look like with maybe like 10 pounds less of makeup. A woman. Realness. Okay, maybe you call walk realness. That's the realness <laughs> attitude. You said a woman. Mm-hmm. Realness. I mean, the, the, everything else is giving real. Mm-hmm. Have you ever used your real eyebrows in your drag? Yeah. Sometimes I'll shave like the first half and just like draw it out. You ever used the whole eyebrow? Yeah, I've I pulled tape where the eyebrow shape goes up. So you feel kind. I feel lazy because <laughs> I don't want to block it out. <laughs> it's okay to be trans. You ever go to the store like this? No. Y'all don't have bodegas out here. I pump gas like this. On the way home, the car's about to break down. You're like, oh shit, I should have got gas. You be getting out? You be shaking? You be shaking ass in the deli? If the moment calls for it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're here in Vegas today. You just came back from a ball in Paris. But before you were international, let's take it way back. Back whenever you were just a little twister in bed <laughs> Like, how did you get introduced in the ballroom? Like, what was your first, like, entry point into that scene? So, okay, you remember MySpace? Giggly. Oh, wow. I'm the, gr- the girls are 30, but they act like they're too young. I don't know, but Did you know that? about MySpace? So, I was on MySpace, and, you know, I was just... I was pretending I was 16, but I was really 12. And like, I was adding all the alphabet people, mm-hmm. you know, the, I was adding all of them. I was just like, well, at this point, I didn't know trans women existed. Like, I just thought that like, the, tr- the girls was the girls. Mm-hmm. So like, I was just like, okay, I was adding all the bitch queens and stuff. And then there was this boy named Andre. And he was like, oh, you need to come to the village. And I was just like, the village? So I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know, it sounds crazy. And indeed it was. So mm-hmm. I go to the village and then Andre's like, bitch, do you Vogue? And I'm over here like, Vogue? Like, like the magazine? Bitch, I'm like, I don't understand. Because you know, everybody's perception of Vogue back in the day was... Oh, like Madonna's music video? Yes, yeah, so I was like, hello? And then next thing you know, 
not two weeks later, I'm I'm watching people slam their their backs on the floor, and I'm just like, bitch, what the fuck is going on? But that was when I had this. Like, I don't remember that in the music video. Right. I was like, what? What the fuck? I was like, this is like Madonna met the Exorcist, bitch. It was just like they it was that plus like, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I see you, I see you, I, I love this, I live for the applause. And yes, the backs were slammed, the pussy was pussed, and I was like, okay. And uh, from there on, I started learning how to Vogue. I started mm. learning um, from people in the scene. And yeah, I, I was so shy about it because I want this so bad to be like a boy. So I was just like, if people were to ask me like, oh, do you Vogue? I'd be like, Vogue, ew. I'd be like, I'm not into that gay shit. <laughs> and here I Meanwhile, you're adding every LGBT on MySpace you could possibly find. Listen, I was acting real tradey. That's trade behavior. That, that, that's DL behavior. Uh, earlier, you were showing me pictures of like, you like, I was giving trade back then. And there was like one, you had like a little goatee, you're giving a mug, and you have like a little skirt on. <laughs> yeah, I was in high school at that time. <laughs> um, it was um, it was Halloween, and then I was going to like a ball afterwards. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, we, we had to like, you know, come in a costume, and I was supposed to be Harriet Tubman. Mm. I don't know why. You, me you're, and you're us, dressed as a boy with a little white a, tulle skirt on top of it. I don't understand how any of that is Harriet Tubman. <laughs> I don't either. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 have, I have American public education too, so I'm not too familiar with history, but I don't think that's what she wore <laughs> back in the day. I mean, in my mind, for some reason, I always was taught that she wore like, you know, like a white, like a white garment. Like, I don't know. Listen... I wasn't in the Underground Railroad. I don't know. All I know is like what I We can I only learned. assume. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just like, okay, bitch, we had to bring it. I feel like we had to bring it in a look, but I feel like for specifically the Twisters had to bring it like your favorite, like it was like your favorite female like icon or something or like black history icon. It was something mm. of that sort because I would not have just went to Harriet Tubman for no reason. <laughs> So yeah, I went to school like that too, mm. and it's just me looking there, looking butch boots mm-hmm. with a fucking skirt on, <laughs> and my and a handkerchief on my head, looking ridiculous. Mm. Like whenever you started getting the ballroom, like were you just trying to walk like only like kind of the butch categories, or were you trying to do a little bit of everything? Like what were you trying to get into? I definitely was trying to just be a boy, like you know. That's why like when I. Audition for Drag Race, when on Drag Race and stuff, I didn't really talk about ballroom too much. Like, I did, mm-hmm. but, like, not anything that made it significant for my story, I guess. Mm-hmm. But that was because um, when I was in ballroom, for the most part, I was a butch queen. So it was just like... Which, by the way, a butch queen is a gay male. That's it. Because, I don't know, people be giving new mm-hmm. terms to shit that already has terminology definitions then everybody want to be Miriam Webster mm-hmm. I'm like let the bitch live <laughs> so yeah I was a bitch queen mm-hmm. and I only partook in uh, schoolboy realness which was my first category which is passing as a heterosexual straight student mm-hmm. and realness with a twist which is for the boys who like to bend their wrists Do you, were you drawn to that because as someone who was separated from their family at a young age is that the reason why you were kind of pulled toward that scene no, because I didn't even know, to be honest with you, that Ballroom gave all that until later on as I started growing mm-hmm. up and I started to learn more about like the like the family aspect of Ballroom. So for me, it was really the artistic point because I'm very artistic as a person and I've always been. Mm-hmm. So actually growing up, that's when I was like, oh shit, y'all got free family. Okay, baby, we got moms and dads. Everybody's up here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it gave very... <laughs> But you know, pretty much like yeah. the adoption fair, bitch. It yeah. gave, it gave coin. Like it gave. Oh, I could find me a family. Mm-hmm. But um, at first, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. But like, I think that that's what makes the ballroom. I'm not gonna ruin your floor. No, it's okay. I mean, it's it's really just a piece of fur. I am. I am a liability. Mm-hmm. That's a cute name. Liability. Liability. Like, but like liability. Liability. Sanchez. Liability. Sanchez Miyagi Mugler. <laughs> Wait, wait, what was I talking about? Okay, I got this, I got this, don't remind me. Family, aspect, Family. yes, yeah. I love it. It was amazing. So you are really drawn to ballroom almost as like a hobby, artistic expression. You had no idea that you were Stuart Little the whole time, about to get adopted. No, I had no idea. It was just giving very much like, okay. 
And then I had like found like a gay mother and a gay father. And then it was just kind of like, oh, hey, we're here. We're here. We're doing stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, um, at that point, I hadn't even watched like Paris is Burning. I've never seen anything really related. It wasn't until like I started to get a little bit older in my teen years, maybe like 14, 15, 16, that I started to really learn more about the culture. Mm -hmm. Um, And I went to my first mainstream ball when I was like 13. Was I 13? It was in 2007. I went to the Latex Ball. It was an all-ages event, and it was held at the Roseland uh, Ballroom in New York. And um, I remember just, like, being in awe and just being like, bitch, what the fuck? And it's the first time I really got to see ballroom from other categories more than just, like, performance, Mm -hmm. which is what people know as Vogue. Um, But I got to see Runway. I got to see Face. I got to see... Um, hand performance. I got to see a whole bunch of categories that I was just like, okay. And I started to learn more about the other categories. What's the worst category for you that you try to do and it's just chop every time? I've none. Oh. I've never been like... You said they're all chops. So, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Bitch, chopped cheese. You know what a chopped cheese is, right? Uh, yeah, it's like cheese, it's chopped. Maddie, no. <laughs> it's New York. It's like New Yorkian. Like, it's New York. Like, it's like a cheeseburger, but chopped. Oh, it's like food? Yeah, girl. Bitch, no. I told you I don't know anything about that. I'm from Arkansas. Bitch, you're making my ankle swell. We knew about barbecue. What you know about barbecue? Bitch, I know a lot about barbecue. Mm-hmm. Not like this. You know, you're not from the South. You don't know. Anyways, yeah. that's what I was saying. Um, Fuck. What was I saying? Something about chopped cheese. You went on about it too long. Oh, no, wait. What oh, was you were, t- we're talking about categories that you weren't good at. And you said none of them because you think Oh, no. I, so I've never really delved too much. The only categories I've ever walked was realness, uh, performance, best dressed, and runway, which I have perform- I have trophies for all of those categories and have won all those categories. So hmm. it's nothing too crazy. Okay. Okay. Because you stay in the kiki balls? Is that... No, I was in the Kiki scene, though, for a while. Mm-hmm. Bitch, she's trying to read me right now. <laughs> Bitch, you're a Kiki. I, I know. I've never... <laughs> I, 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 was, I was talking about it earlier. I haven't even, like, looked into a ball because I know that I couldn't handle it. But I'm, guys, I'm comfortable on this side of the chair just being mean to people where I get control of editing. I know if I go to a ball and I see the people's expressions on people's faces when they upload it on TikTok later on, it's going to hurt my feelings. The Kiki scene is just as competitive as the mainstream scene now. Mm. It's, like, crazy. Like, when I first started, the Kiki scene was just, like, a Kiki. Now it's just, like, bitch, the Kiki scene, they're bringing it just as hard as the mainstream ball. So, Mm -hmm. shit, girl. But I haven't been in the Kiki scene for, like, 10 years. I kind of, like, distanced myself a little bit after I started really doing um, drags Mm -hmm. and started performing in the clubs to get my coins. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I still stood in the mainstream scene for a while. Yeah. I think if I ever did anything ballroom, I would literally just try to do bizarre, just make crazy shit. I, I could see that for you. I could put like some stuff with some styrofoam and some, you know, some fabrics and things together. Do you feel like you look bizarre? Do you think I look bizarre? No, I think you look really pretty, actually. Thank you. Go ahead Today. and say it. Lie to me. Today. Yeah. <laughs> very true. Very true. Just because I'm wearing flat hair. No, you today. look hot. You know what? It's like funny. I feel like you was decided to be a fish stick because you thought I was going to be here being a fish stick too and then I decided to I did to... whenever you were coming on the show I was looking at like your drag from like uh, when you were on the show and I was like it was you know very big big pastel hair it's very drag but then lately you've been doing all the ballroom stuff so I was like I'm gonna dress it down you know be kind of like like I'm trying to walk something and then you come here dressed all the fuck out well I wore this outfit actually to debut uh, in my current house um, the house of Miyaki Mugler Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's actually a remake of the Linda Evangelist uh, metal outfit from the 1991 uh, Terre Mugler Couturisme fashion show. Mm-hmm. You think it's given Linda Evangelista? I don't think. It is. She said, I don't think, period, stop. <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think at all. <laughs> Bitch, my brain has not functioned in the last, like, four years. <laughs> but earlier we were talking about uh, your family, and it was actually only a few years ago that you reconnected with your biological parents through Ancestry.com. What was it like uh, like reconnecting with them after so many years? So it was kind of funny because like I reconnected with my biological mother first through my grandmother, and it was like, okay, like 
<clears throat> me and her, like, we hit it off, but it was like, I feel like we never got to really connect, connect, because I just feel like we didn't really connect. No mm. shade. Like, I was just like, yeah, I came out to your punani, but like, that's the connection we had. Mm -hmm. And then it was just like, I don't know, me and my dad really hit it off. Well, I found out mm -hmm. that I was a one, I was like a one night stand baby and my father didn't even know and it was like a whole situation. Oh shit. Um, which is like fab, sissy fab, but like at the same time it was just given very much okay. But my dad and me are so similar in personality and um I feel like I really like developed a lot of love for him and a lot of like admiration for him because um he's a badass motherfucker. I don't know. Like he's just like he's just such a thug and like I'm like same. Me too. Like mm -hmm. I'm with like thug misses and he's like, you know, he's clearly my father. Like I don't know, when you if you talk to him, you hear hear him talk like he talks just like me. Like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I know that uh with your mom your mom, when you did reconnect, your mom was actually really supportive of you, even sharing, like, your GoFundMe. I, I, but I didn't see much about, like, your dad, so I didn't realize that you and him had, like, that closeness that you Yes, did. yes, 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 you're right. My mom did support my GoFundMe. Oh, wow. How did you know that? <laughs> this bitch be going through the fucking archives. Just be digging shit up. But I'm not mad. Bitch, you should work for the motherfucking FBI. That's right. Uh, yeah, but she, she was, she's supportive. It's just, like, Personality wise, I feel like off the bat we didn't really connect. Mm -hmm. Like on like I, I I can have a conversation with her, but I feel like she's not ever in a good place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, and like she has dealt with some demons and like, you know, I just sent her my well my 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 blessings and prayers. Like mm -hmm. I just there's not much I can really do for her. No shade. Yeah. Is your GoFundMe still up? Is it still running? Um Yes, so I do have a GoFundMe for like gender affirming care and stuff, mm -hmm. which um, I've used the like money that people donated to like help me do stuff like yeah laser and stuff like that. Like I'm really like on the DL about a lot of the stuff I do for my transition, mm -hmm. which is I like a mystery aspect, <clears throat> and like I was completely against the idea of crowdfunding at first because I feel like people are so judgmental. Mm -hmm. But I feel like at the end of the day, like especially as someone who is seeking these things i feel like it's okay it's mm -hmm. okay to be like girl i need a little bit of help you know mm -hmm. people think that i'm out here making millions of dollars i'm like girl like i'm a regular ass person like i have a day job and yes i make my my coin on the side and do stuff mm -hmm. but like um you know gender affirming care is very expensive even if you have insurance and people don't think about how if you're getting surgeries, like, you have to take time off of work. You have to take time off of doing stuff. Like, bitch, now, like, if I decide to go get bags tomorrow, like, bitch, guess what? I have to be in bed for, like, a week, and then I can't dance for another extra month or so. Like, it's shit like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it hasn't been really active, and I stopped sharing it because... Um, I just don't want to bother nobody with it. Mm -hmm. And, like, I always feel like... Honestly, I feel like anytime I crowdfund, which even recently, like, I've been having, like, a lot of weird, like, health problems. I think I was telling you, like, when you picked me up in the airport today. Um, mm -hmm. Like, but one of those things is, like, my leg has been, like, on and off swelling. And because of it, I haven't been able to dance. But, like, I can walk runway and stuff. But, like, to do active, active stuff, my leg gives out. Mm -hmm. And it's something I'm not used to. Uh, but the doctors can't find anything about it. But I've ran up hospital bills. And I was like, oh, let me let me crowdfund for this. And people gave me a lot of shit for it. Oh, wow, you got somewhere to be? This bitch is over here, alarm going off, pulling off in the Priyanka. I pulled up and you pulled off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as you were saying, uh, you were talking about how, like, you don't like doing crowdfunding because, like, judgment. And yes. Stuff like that. Yeah, and, I, like, I, I just got really annoyed because then, like, I posted a video of me, like, in Paris walking runway and somebody literally commented on it. It was like, oh, does anybody else not feel bamboozled? Like, we gave you this, like, we, like, sent you, like, all this money and, like, you're out here in Paris now. And I'm like, first of all, bitch, I work, too, and I can, I'm capable of funding my own trip to Paris. I'm capable of funding my own effects like what i was seeking help with was hospital bills which thank you because of my followers and people who donated to that i was able to like eradicate maybe like 
85% of, like, my medical debt that I had had. So, you know, which it wasn't, like, an outstanding crazy amount, but it was a lot that I was just like, bitch, I'm about to go into my debt debt. I was like, girl. But they helped out a lot. So, but when people, like, do stuff like that, I feel like they're always trying to make, like, a public show about it mm. and make it seem like, oh, does nobody else feel bamboozled? Like, you could have just messaged me mm. and just been like, hey, like, are you feeling better? Like, hey, I saw you're over there. Like, I just want to know, like... So you, know. you want a refund? Right. I would have been like, girl, how much did you send me? Did you, you send me 20 bucks? Bitch, you could have that shit back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's no shade. I, I feel like if you're going to donate to somebody's cause, it should have no condition. Like, it should be unconditional. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if you're supporting them and then you're going to be upset because they did something afterwards, well, bitch, you gave them the money. It was your choice. Mm-hmm. But to those who are wondering, no, I still haven't gotten an answer to my leg situation. And uh, I'm actually supposed to see a doctor this Friday. So mm-hmm. by the time this airs... <laughs> Maybe I'll have a solution. Mm-hmm. But we'll put the GoFundMe in the link. If you guys have disposable income and you want to give her money anyway. Support her today. Maybe get rid of the other 15% of the debt. Child, listen. I am so broke. Because you're wasting on buying all this Mugler. <clears throat> you know, I wish that was the case. I, I save up a lot to like to pay for like my ballroom effects and stuff. Like I think people think that I'm just swimming in coin and cause the way I carry myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I work really hard for my stuff. Like, you know, I never would just like, it's not in my character to ask people for stuff. I'm a Capricorn. So mm-hmm. like, I'm like everything I have, I have to work hard for it. And like even this outfit alone, like I struggled for like a month to get this outfit. Mm-hmm. You like, struggle getting into it too. I got my people outside waiting for you. <laughs> Y'all lucky Maddie got security up in this bitch. I got two she got cats. her two cats. Yeah. She got her two pusitas. Um, we established how your biological family was supportive of you whenever you reconnected with them. With your adoptive parents, like how, how supportive were they like in ballroom, your sexuality, gender identity, like everything? I you- don't know. I've see the thing is that I I've okay, so I guess I've lived my life as like a delusional being always. So like okay. I've never felt the need to like come out or announce stuff. So like mm. I've never had that. So like I've never, you know, my my pa- my adoptive parents are divorced. My father, I don't talk to him and my like not for any particular reason. He just he's living his own life and he's married and has kids. So I pay him in dust the way he paid me in dust. And then um, with my mom, I feel like I just exist, you know? Mm-hmm. One day I was walking around and she was like, do you have titties? And I was like... And she was like, okay. Did you grow up uh, Catholic? Uh, no. So, yes. Because you went into Catholicism at one point. I don't know if that was family or your own journey that you found that through. So... Basically, uh, from a young child, I uh, so I used to see stuff. Like I used to see like, like I used to get like night visits <laughs> from like spirits and stuff. Okay. And um, I would always tell my mom. My mom would be like, "Pray." It's that Benadryl. That shit will get you. Um, but then um, my mom would always be like, "Pray, pray, pray." And then I ended up kind of like turning towards Catholicism on my own, <laughs> which sounds crazy, but like. I ended up, you know, going through the whole thing, the whole nine yards. Like, I did, like, a baptism, communion, confirmation, all by choice. And, you know, it's crazy because although I think, like, the Christian religion is just not really for me, um, especially because I am a priest in a completely different Mm -hmm. tradition. But I do have this, like, belief in, like, the Christian God for some reason, Mm -hmm. but not in the Christian beliefs. Um... But I guess it's because in my practice, which is uh, Lukumi, which is derivative from the Yoruba people Mm -hmm. uh, in West Africa, Nigeria, uh, I I practice the Orisha tradition, and I am initiated to the Orisha Oshun. I don't know. I just have, like, this belief in God, but nature. Mm -hmm. Nature and energy as well. And... um, Kahana is also a practitioner of my tradition. No, I did not know. That. Uh, she just completed her one year anniversary of becoming a priest. Oh, yes. So, like, it's, it's, you practice like Santeria, and that's just another name for like 
the religion that you believe in. Yeah, it's the same. It's one and the same. It's the same. It's the same shit. It's just that people started calling it Santeria because they wanted to make it some Santa Holy Molamuli. Like they wanted to make it extra, and it's just like it's it's colon it's colonization. Mm-hmm. Colonization. Colonization. You're colonization. Not Ooh, that Col- sounds bad. Colonization. Are you a colonizer? That sounds like a good name for like a top who destroys. The colonizer? Yes. Is the colonizer in the room with us? Is it you? No. I'm a lady. You could be both. No. I'm a lady. You could be a lady in a top. I know you put, you put some titties on someone's back before. Oh, God, no. No? That is not me. That's, no. No. Not your, I'm a lady through and through. It's not your church. Not your denomination. Not my church. Not my denomination. Mm-hmm. I, that's very Luciferian to me. But I, I know at one point like you, you've uh, quit drag a couple times and... <laughs> But like one of the first times actually was because of your religious beliefs. How did drag conflict with your religion the first time that you had quit drag? So my godmother was like, if you don't stop doing drag, she said if I don't stop dressing up like a woman, um, my spirits were going to disagree with me and they were going to cut my life short because of it. And Mm -hmm. I was so distraught. I was like, what? And then like, I will never forget, like I really quit. And then uh, two weeks later I was watching the pop anthology at the end of the year. And I was listening to all the horrible top 40 that's not that horrible that I lip synced that year. Mm-hmm. And I burst into an eruption of tears as I listened to E.T., an only girl in the world. And I said, I must get back in drags. Mm-hmm. And I went to Westgate, Frankie Sharp's party at the Westway. Mm-hmm. And I put on that $9.99 fishnet outfit with that dry Cynthia. And never took it off. No. But with your drag, how did you get into drag? Because you first started with ballroom. and But then you made the shift to drag, and that started to become more like your full-time actual way of income. Like, when did you start making that shift? What really got you into drag? So, um, I was like very curious about dressing up in girls clothes and i think it was kind of like me experiencing more so like a gender situation than anything else and this is like me kind of like maybe having that discovery like oh you may be a little extraterrestrial Mm -hmm. and then um yeah i just started like maybe you're more than just a boy with a twist yeah i was like maybe the twist is that i'm actually it's a plot twist i can't (laughs) A feminine con uh-huh. and and um, you know I I I did what I had to do. Like I I started doing the drags, but then like I feel like at first it was from a very artistic point of view, uh, and it was more of a self expression. I'm not falling apart. I'm not dismantling. Don't look at me that way, man. Yeah. No. About to give you some oil, <laughs> like the Tin Man, Madeline, Maddie, Madeline, Morphosis. <laughs> Please don't use my full government name. Oh. Anyway. Um, I don't know. It just started happening. And then when I found out you could make money doing drag, I knew that I was a good entertainer. I said, fuck it. I'm going to do it. Like, life about, for me, especially growing up in Best Buy, was just really, like, all about hustling. Like, I was just like, how can I hustle? And, like, at that point, like, you know, I I had done everything. Child, I had stolen people's phones, jumped people, take their sneakers. I had, I was ready for something else. So I said, it's time to put on some makeup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, it worked out for you because I mean, you got on TV, you got on Drag Race, you know, your life changed with that. I don't know how to this day. I don't know how because I, I said I don't know. we don't I, either. It was it's just... well, you know. First of all, bitch, Miss Madeline, I got something for you after this. But let me start off first off by saying, <laughs> well, I had auditioned. I did not. I, I was just trying to get out of, like, a fucked up situation mm-hmm. I was having in my life where I was just kind of, like, stuck. I wasn't around the people I needed to be around at that time. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, I was just... Things weren't working out for me. So I said, let me audition. I did. And then I got on. I got on. And I was... I was like, what? And, you know, people, when I walk into the show, but it's like, oh, Asha was the it girl of the scene and whatnot. And da 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 But, like, I think what people don't realize is that, like... I had to really fight for that. And whenever I obtain success, there's always people who are like, why her? And it's like, I feel like people don't understand everything that I've ever done in my life. I put my heart, blood, sweat, and tears into. It could be the smallest of tasks. Bitch, I could work at Chili's. 
and I'm going to put my blood, sweat, and tears into it. And I will mm. pick up those tissues. As someone that worked at Chili's, I'll tell you right now, it's harder than it looks. You wouldn't make it. Babes, I will pick up. Like, I, I could make it in bed style. You couldn't make it at Chili's. We're not built. You're built different. Yeah, you're built like a hippopotamus. <laughs> I'm not that big. <laughs> you gotta make If you're going to read, do something correct. <clears throat> Bitch, I'm illiterate, please. <laughs> That 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 was like a lot of what really got me going towards like drag race, drag and all that stuff. It's really like just the hustle, like trying to make it. Bitch. And then once I got it, I was just like, okay. Like once I like got off of All Stars, I was like, it's time for me to to figure my shit my own shit out. Mm. And um, yeah, unfortunately I had to do that in front of millions of people. Mm. And that didn't really go so well. <laughs> I mean, you made it like halfway through the season, so you know you didn't do that bad. You made some moments. You got one of the most quotable sound bites of the entire franchise. Like you had some moments. You made an impact. You know, I think about it so bad because okay, I feel like because of the locals drag scene in New York, being a person of color, but also somebody who comes from a very urban like environment, I dealt with a lot of like people basically wanting me to whitewash myself and kind of code switch because like out people were just calling me ghetto and accusing me of stealing shit and this and that. it was bad. And I feel like that brought me to where I was in Drag Race, where I was like very like code switched, and I didn't realize it until years later. Mm-hmm. But um, I think about it now. I'm like, bitch, if I was to ever go back on Drag Race, the girls wouldn't be able to take because it's not going to be giving like, oh, like you're perfect, you're beautiful. It's going to be giving like, bitch, be about your motherfucking word and step the fuck up. You got some shit to say? Let's fucking go. Mm-hmm. Come on, you're bitch, not- from the door. From the door, be like, bitch, you got a problem? Let's go right now. Step up. You're gonna make Drag Race history being the first queen to stab another queen. Like, stab? I don't need to stab nobody, bitch. When you got a mouth like this, like, it's all it takes is like, you gotta be bold and you gotta demand your respect. And if a bitch wanna sit there and be passive aggressive, bitch, mm-hmm. <laughs> hold up, cause I'm about to pass you the aggression. Fuck you. No. Oh my goodness. It makes me glad that I have a, this kind and congenial. You a compassionate show that I do, because otherwise I might see the wrath. Well, I tell people all the time, I'm a, I'm a January Capricorn, okay. and um, my thing is I'm I, I'm very into like reciprocity. Is that the word? Reciprocity. Is that it? I think so. I'm probably wrong, but fuck it. If you're nice to me, I'm gonna be just as nice to you. I'm gonna be like so reciprocative of reciprocal, whatever. Recipro- reciprocate, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm reciprocated. Yeah. Bitch, the minute you do me dirty in the slightest bit, I'm going full darkness. No, dude. I'm a villain, and I'm okay being a villain. And I think that's the thing is that it's taken me so long to realize that I don't think I'm meant to be this, like, politically correct. Like, it's not me. I'm not your fucking friend. I'm not a role model. I'm me. I'm a person. And that's why we need you back on All Stars, because what, you came back too soon the first time. You should have cooked yeah, a little but longer. But I, also, too, like, we need good villains. No one wants to be a villain anymore. I'll go be a fucking villain. I don't give a fuck. You know why? Because ain't nobody going to tell me shit. And all, listen, mm-hmm. I've already lost, like, half of my fan base. So it's just like, bitch, I don't got shit to lose. Bitch, if I go on, it's going to be like, bitch, wow, I get to go and wear new fashion, new me, new look, new, new style, new cut, new color. Mm-hmm. And bitch, guess what? It's a new attitude. Because I'm 1,000% sure of myself. So it's just like, I just don't give a fuck anymore. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, you got a problem? That's nice. Mm-hmm. Go to therapy, bitch. Well, as we were saying, like, with you going back to All Stars, did you, you, it, was like, it was just the next year after your season that you went back. Do you feel like you did go back too soon? That you should have, like, cooked a little longer or waited a little bit? No, but I think I went back when I needed to because I needed to show not just... Anyway, I needed to show the producers and the world that, bitch, I was just broke in season nine. Mm-hmm. Bitch, I, as soon as I got the coin, y'all saw my vision. And people were like, oh, you did so good, bitch. I was the same shit I would have done, but it's just I had the money to get mm-hmm. the looks. That's it. And the only reason the makeup was really different was because when I went on season nine, bitch, I was experimenting. Mm. It was just bad timing. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst time to experiment. Yeah. I don't know what I would, I look back and I go, bitch, why was I doing that? And I, for some reason, was under the impression that for the camera, you had to paint very heavy. That's, that's what it got me. Cause I was used to painting for like spotlights and stuff, like pageantry, yeah. you got to paint real dark. But then they gave very much like, no, you got to paint light. And mm. I was like, bitch, what? They want realness. It tore. I didn't say anyone was giving it. That's what they want. 
it tore that tore my confidence up. It Drag was race? yeah, like especially like in my first season, there was this point where I was dressed up as Princess Disaster, and they were like, "Look at the cast." They were like, "You're on the season with a bunch of beautiful girls," and they're like, "Now look at yourself." And I was like, "Oh." I was like, okay. I cried a lot during the season nine filming. Mm. Like, I I really left that season feeling like the ugliest piece of shit in the world. Mm -hmm. How did it compare being on Drag Race versus being on Legendary? Like, how did those experiences compare? Oh, in Legendary, I had a phone. (laughs) Obviously. And we could leave and do whatever we wanted. Mm -hmm. So it was fucking fab. Oh, I don't know if we could leave and do whatever we wanted. Mm -hmm. I did anyway. But But I know with with like Legendary and the ballroom scene, it could be a little bit more... Harsh with the critiques, very brutal honesty, and a strong opinion. So I didn't know like if it compared to the opinions that you heard from like people on Drag Race and the audience. Legendary was definitely different because it took us a week to film an episode, and then on top of that, girl, we had like the practices was crazy. But like you know, in Drag Race, you have two shots or three shots sometimes to get mm. something, and Legendary is one shot, and that's it. Mm. So like, if somebody fucked up, you done. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. There will be no pulling up in the Priyanka because the Priyanka has departed. <laughs> Bitch, it's, it's done. It's clipped. But, you know, the phone is essential. Like, I need my phone. I need connection mm. to the outside world. And it's like not to tell them who's going home and who's the... Cause... Girl, when I was filming Legendary, I wasn't telling nobody. I didn't give a fuck. Mm. We don't care about that shit. I just need access so that way I don't fucking lose my mind. And, you know, yeah. yeah the, the, the drag race, like, being sequestered and, like, them taking your phones... And everything, so which, I, which I understand why they do it, but at the same time too, it's like that's what I imagine. It's like for whenever rich people go to prison and they just have they're in jail, but they have a nice room. That's what that's what I imagine it's like. Like no communication, the windows glued shut, can't leave the door. No, for me, but I'm the like nice. I I feel like I need it to the point where like I will find a way to like have like four burner phones. Mm-hmm. I won't say this on camera, but I'll, I'll give you some tips after. Okay, okay. Noted. That's how I got my edibles in. That's how I got my weed in. Mm-hmm. Oh, girl, that's how... Sh- you say you're going to give me tips later, like either of us are going to get back for All-Stars, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're both going back for the next uh, the next season of... Um, legendary. Brown, you know. Yeah, Legendary. Mm-hmm. We're going to start our... They, legendary they... All-Stars. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be the judge. If Jamila can be a judge, I can be a judge. And then um, I will be... I'm just going to be up there in the crustiest, hard front wig. It's like, ciao. Oh, they do chop on Legendary. Oh, mm-hmm. shit, they do. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Me on the show also doesn't know. Yeah, well, I mean, you just popped in there. You're on your phone. You're having a good time. Just doing your little routine. Oh, girl, yes. Listen, I probably lost like 10 pounds filming that show. Bitch, I was having so much trade in my hotel room. It was fab. <laughs> Between like ballroom and drag, which one do you think you were better at in general, overall? Or were I you th- just bad at both? Madeline Morphosis, <laughs> you are out of control, out of fucking line, out of pocket, and you have no right. I know, but I'm going to reel it in for the edit, though, so it'll be fine. We're just going to take the good ones. <laughs> I am good at everything I put my mind to, except for staying concentrated. That's the only thing I can't do. I can't even... And saying the word reciprocity. <laughs> you know what? Nobody's perfect. That's true. Except for me. You have to understand, like, in my mind, I live in one huge delusion and my world revolves around me. So if you talk about drag and what I do as a drag artist, I do think I do what I do better than any other drag artist who does what I do because it's me. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, maybe it's confidence. Maybe it's delusion. Maybe it's Maybelline. Bitch, I don't fucking know. Maybe it's the fucking the crackhead juice they put in the New York City water. But that's how I feel. It's all Same thing. When I go to when I'm in ballroom, you ask anybody. I hit the back of the runway. Bitch, I won. If the bitch wins, she was not meant to win, and she fucking lo- I lost because of politics. Fuck that bitch. And that that's the delusion you guys need to carry. That's the takeaway from this interview. If anything goes wrong, it's not your fault. It's rigged against you. Fuck them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very much that <laughs> delusion. Uh, everybody needs a little delulu in their life. Whenever you really uh started hitting drag hard. You weren't alone because you started at the House of Aja with a few other queens, including two people that would also join you as Drag Race alumni, uh, Dolly San and Candy Muse. Yes. What was the dynamic like before, with all you before Drag Race and then after you each had been on the show? Okay, so first, it was actually me and Momo Shade and we kind of started doing drag together. And then after that, um, Dahlia became my like first, my second 
technical drag daughter after Momo. And um, I put her in drags and she looked crazy. And then, um, yeah, it was like, we were just kind of cool. We operated very family-like, very chill. And then um, Dahlia was just kind of like all over the place. She moved from place to place to place to place. Bitch, we never knew where the fuck she was. Um, Candy, I really became friends with. Uh, right before, like, the year that I got on Drag Race. And um, it was easy. We just hit it off, and we became really cool. So I feel like the dynamic afterwards was kind of like, okay, like, we're, we're, we have a platform now. Like, we're doing stuff. But, like, it was like, people were such haters. They were like, oh, like, y'all this and y'all that and y'all that. And... I, but I didn't give a fuck. I was like, we're just going to, like, do what we're going to do. I was taking my daughter's places, and people didn't like that. And then we just kind of kept expanding and, like, kept kind of, like, carrying on the lineage and stuff. And, you know, till this day, even though, like, the House of Aja technically doesn't exist, you know, these are still my children. And, um, you know, even though I've had my ups and downs with all of them, you know, my legacy still carries on. Mm-hmm. You know, even with now, uh, Tsunami's on Drag Race now. She yeah. just got announced. And that's... That's my granddaughter. That's my grand. That's my legacy. That is the seed of my seed. Mm-hmm. Bitch, my name lives on. <laughs> and like for me, I'm always going to be proud of them, regardless of our ups and downs. I will always be proud of everything that my children do because I feel like if you're going to be a proper mother figure, you have to acknowledge your children's success. So while I'm home, domesticated, not getting booked, Candy's traveling the world and doing what she's doing, and I'm very proud of her. And I've had people be like, oh, does that make you feel away? Bitch, no. I, I'm, I've done this shit already. I've already traveled the whole world mm. up and down. Like, I'm finally living my life and living my truth. And, you know, to see them living their truth and doing their thing, yeah. that's fab. I live for it. You're ready to <laughs> retire at the ripe age of 30. Like, you lived, <laughs> you lived a long, good life. I'm ready to to do something. I'm ready to get paid more to do less. Aren't we all? Bitch, I don't want to be on motherfucking stage. Hey, start a YouTube show. <laughs> no shade. No shade. I mean, what would I call it? I think I might call it um, Give It To Me Straight. Do you like that? Maybe. I think I think someone might already have that one, but we'll workshop it. We'll workshop it. But what was it like, though, whenever, like, you went on the show and you had, you made it, like, halfway through, you did pretty well. Candy Muse, like, she went far. But whenever Dolly went on the show, came home first, when it, what was it like when she came home? She says, like, they kicked me off first episode. They made me dress up like broccoli. Like, what did that conversation look like? I was on a plane and I was going to San Francisco and I had a dream that Dolly got eliminated. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait. So what we do is we text the person to see if the text goes through. So I texted Dolly and the text went through. And I was like, bitch, I see that it was delivered. What's the tea? And she was like, she told me, she was like, I got eliminated, da da da. You know, and she told me what the tea was. And I was like, oh, wow. I'm not one of those people. I don't let the, the, the progress of Drag Race, like, be indicative of people's, like, worth. So, like, I don't know. I do. So how do you look at yourself? Should have been better. Should have worked harder. It is what it is. You need therapy. I was better than four other people, but worse than eight others. Do you really believe that? No, because I, I should have won. Everything was just rigged against me. Fuck them. It's all, yes! poli- it's all politics. That's delusions of grandeur. <laughs> That's how you're supposed to do it. Listen, if you can't fake it, you'll never make it. Mm-hmm. That was my exact thoughts as I hyped myself up. Mm-hmm. Well, with a drag race, like obviously, like you now on the biggest drag platform in the world. But then it was shortly after drag race that you actually quit drag. What was it about drag that you felt was incompatible with who you were at that time? I feel like I was no longer in in need of performing gender or performing, you know, an expression of that gender. I felt like. One, I needed to step away from drag in order to completely come to terms with who I was. Uh, But then I also felt like I needed to understand that it was no longer going to be a performance. It was just going to be who I was. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that was when I was like, okay, you know, I'm okay with people calling what I do drag. But, like, you know, I'm sitting here in a full Mugler remake, like... 
be for the gods. Like, but I, would I call this drag? To me, it's not mm-hmm. drag. But if people want to call it drag and pay me to call it drag, <laughs> mm-hmm. I will gladly take it because, mm-hmm. bitch, there are drag queens out there who are trying to get this look. But it was after seeing Kylie win All Stars, you know, a trans woman winning Drag Race, that it kind of helped you recompartmentalize like what drag meant to you and make it seem more as though like drag a drag is what you do, not who you are. Oh, down! It, shit, when when Kylie went on, it was just like something clicked in my mind, and it was like, girl, that could be you. Mm-hmm. Kylie's like my trans Jesus. <laughs> I was just saying, like your identity has kind of like gone through like a journey, like first going through. You know, identifying as like a homosexual man to be like non-binary, and now identifying as a trans woman. Is that where you are currently in your journey, identifying trans woman? I feel like what I needed was to step away from identifying as anything and just kind of be who I am. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I don't know, because like even like I never identified really with being like a gay person. It never felt right to me. And at first I thought, well, maybe I'm internally homophobic, but then I realized like, no, I just don't think I'm gay. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, well, why am I not gay? And then it's like, okay, well, we're trying to dissect this. And it's like, oh, well, maybe because I'm a fucking woman. <laughs> you know, it kind of got to that point where it was just like, okay. And, you know, for me, I don't identify as a woman. I just am a woman of trans experience. Mm. That's just it. Like, I, I, I'm not one of these girls who's like out in the world trying to force everybody to see me as anything. I just simply am. Mm-hmm. And they see me, so. <laughs> do you feel as though you're closer to being a more fully realized person, or do you think that your identity is a constant like ebb and flow? I feel like I am very close. I, in terms of identity, I'm at my final ground. This is my final stop. I am a motherfucking transsexual. Like I am. I'm a woman, and that's it. Like for me, that's it. I'm happiest I've ever been. And bitch, I don't need nothing else. I don't need nothing else. Too much, too much, too much. Uh-uh, I'm done. I'm done on this little... The boat has sailed. It's left permanently. Do you have any regrets? No. Life? Transitioning was the best thing I ever did in my life. Do you have regrets in general about your life? I regret coming here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't have any regrets, to be honest with you. I feel like... I would do it all over again. As, as far as you saying that you have no regrets, we're going to put that to the test. We're going to do a rapid fire section, and I'm just going to ask, uh, bring up something about your life, and you tell me if you regret that or not. Oh, fuck. So, we're now going to play a game called No Regrets? Question mark. I regret the game already. <laughs> all right, first, we're, st- we're going to start light. Your monologue about Valentina. No regrets. No regrets. That was a very quotable moment. But yeah. obviously it had like a lot of negativity from like her fan base, you know. It was a traumatic moment for me too because like I had to do with a lot of hate because of it. Mm-hmm. And in the moment I was like angry, mm-hmm. but... But you don't regret it. No, I wish I would have said something meaner though. <laughs> I wish I would have said something like, fuck that bitch. Like, mm-hmm. I wish I would have like ripped her costume up or something and be like, fuck that bitch. I don't know. I love her though. Love you, girl. Mm-hmm. So monologue about Valentina. No regrets. No. All right. Do you regret your years of gassing up Candy Muse? <laughs> um, no, I don't regret that either because I feel like I got to see her blossom into like this, like completely also delusional human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think she has star quality? Yeah, I think I think Candy Muse is a star. Mm-hmm. I feel like she is. Uh, she's definitely born for television and entertainment. She's like, she's kind of like reality tv gold like mm. you hate to love or you love to hate her like mm-hmm. you know but you the people who love candy love candy and mm. like that's that's i feel like she's like she's a good representation for like people of her, her yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so gassing up candy no regrets all right do you regret Calling someone a senseless cow and getting your t- Twitter temporarily banned. To be honest with you, yes, because that was so much work for no reason. Fuck that bitch, though. She was a senseless cow. You regret, you regret calling her a senseless cow? Yeah, I mean, I don't regret it, but I do regret it because, like, I, I guess I don't regret it. Bitch, I don't have no regrets. Okay, okay. So, calling someone, getting your Twitter banned, calling someone a senseless cow. No regret. Nipples. What? <laughs> okay. Do you regret... Critiquing Anitra's duck walk. (laughs) 
Not at all. <laughs> Bitch, I definitely have no regrets about that. Because Valentina's fans, you know, they got mad with the monologue, but Anitra's fans, you know, you came for one of the most popular people in the season. No regrets? No. I don't give a fuck. The, buck, the duck walk was bad. And it's still bad. It was so fun. To this day, and I'll say this, for the record, I, I've i never had a problem with her voguing. Mm. It's more so of just the way that she handled the situation and addressing, like, ballroom in regards to it. Mm. I think if she would have just, like, after making thousands and thousands of dollars of doing the fucking duck walk everywhere around the world... If she would have at least poured some of that back into the community, I feel like a lot of people in the community would have forgiven her a bit. And because I feel like it's not the fact that she was doing the duck walk, because people do it all the time on Drag Race. It's more so she made her whole shtick on Drag Race like this spoof on ballroom. So that was my thing. It's just like, you know... Do you regret the way you went about it? No. I could have went a lot meaner. I was very nice about it. I was very nice. I, bitch, I did not saw her character or nothing like that. That's what people don't understand. The only reason I went about it that, like that, the way I did was because when I reached out to her and she paid me in dust, and people were like, oh, she's protecting her peace. Fuck that. If I were to sit here and do like a whole, like, I don't know, like make my entire brand on a TV show with a talent competition, Capuera. And there was a whole, it's hard to, it's, you know what it's hard? It's hard to compare it to anything because ballroom itself is a civil rights movement made specifically for, for black and brown queer people, which not to say that she's not in those, in that demographic, mm. um, because I'm pretty sure that she is a Latina, but it's more so to say, like I tell people all the time, people talk about gatekeeping and ballroom, we're not really it's not like we're at the gate, like, you can't come in. It's more so like, okay, like, can we just check your ID before you come in? Mm -hmm. So we know you're here, we know you come here. That's it. It's like checking for school ID. Mm -hmm. And like, I wish that there was more of that involvement. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, critiquing the duck walk, no regrets. Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you regret not pursuing your middle school dream of becoming a slam poet? I'm not sure. In hindsight, do you regret not, not pursuing your slam poetry dream? I wanted to be a slam poet. In middle school. I'm a slam poet now. You want me to slam poetry you? No. Um, uh, wait. Okay, slam poetry. I'm sitting next to Madeline. She's looking at me like, damn, you lying. This is not happening in my house. That's it. Not pursuing your dream of being a slam poet. No regrets. No regrets. Do you regret jumping off the stairs and almost dying at Mrs. Williamsburg 2014? Have you seen the video? Mm -mm. There's a video I have to show you. Mm -hmm. But no, I don't regret it. Um, that that Thorgy Thor mm -hmm. came up to me and was like, you need to do the most outrageous thing. And just, you know, people love when you jump from stuff and you go and do that stuff that nobody else is gonna do. And I was like. Was that the same night you was it the same night you were in like the Star Wars outfit? Yeah, I was light, dressed, lightsaber. I was dressed This one? It wasn't that night, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is from Miss Williamsburg, right? <laughs> that was that was from the wild card night. Uh where um so I had lost What's going on with the lipstick? <laughs> what are you doing here? Break that down for me. <laughs> what? 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 Bitch, what the fuck is going on? You have a lightsaber. Your your lipstick is not even like lipstick. You're like you're just like blowing Papa Smurf. <laughs> it's a triangle. It's a tri I was an alien. I don't know. Uh, Listen, this day and age, I was trying to be unique. Is what you are, you were, alien superstar. You were an alien Bitch. with a, a flat blonde wig and pigtails. No, that was my real hair. No, it wasn't. That was. You don't see the hairline. Well, I know that's your hair. The blonde ain't though. That's extensions. Oh no, that, those are pony ponytails. Yeah, you're like in a this distant galaxy where women have receding <laughs> hairlines. 
Bitch, the DMT is spooky. <laughs> but do you regret jumping off those stairs and Hell almost no. dying? No. Hell no. No, my, no regrets. All right. You're getting more and more fish as the, as the night goes on. That orange soda hitting. She is getting realer. All right, last one. Do you regret this? There's a makeup tutorial for this on YouTube. A what not to do? <laughs> what what's what's going on with the hair situation? That's what <laughs> it's the makeup is fine, but what's going on with the hair? That's what's really getting me. That in the the Charlotte Bruce dress. Listen, let me let me explain myself. Okay. I don't know. Listen, these are the times. This is before like this is like we was like on drag race season like three mm -hmm. when when this whole debacle happened. It's like 2013, 2012. It's something like that. Mm -hmm. And literally, I can't explain what is happening in that photo because I do not know. It's, but the hair, like, do you know what's going on with the hair? Because I think I see your hair poking out underneath. <laughs> but it looks like you just put, like, a hard front, long pink Party City wig and bunch it up on top. And, yeah. put, it, and put it in a braid. <laughs> yes. Yes, listen, it, this is creativity, bitch. It, look, hold up. Give me her. This is creativity. Bitch, I was saying, let me be creative. Let me put this plastic shit on my head and swoop it doo doo into a motherfucking braid, bitch. This is creativity at its motherfucking finest, bitch. I don't want to hear shit, bitch. I felt fab. I did shout out videos on Facebook in this wig. I still have it in my on my Facebook. It's me like wearing this with a deep ass voice, like. Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to da 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 like giving not a fuck in the world. You know what? I regret this. I was this one of the questions? Yeah. I regret this. <laughs> I fucking regret this. So I regret this because then you would not be able to bring this up. I am traumatized. We do have a regret. We'll go put her right here. The hair may not the be. The broke ally and the broke ally. The broke ally. <laughs> She's a fierce broke ally. You look like a Molly right now. A Molly? Yeah. Like someone named Molly? Yeah. That's not, earlier you said I look like Bambisha. <laughs> yes! Bitch, this is Bambisha right here. Mm -hmm. Y'all can't tell me she don't look like Bambisha Jones. <laughs> okay, maybe Dela Cruz. Mm -hmm. uh, you're giving me like Bronx Italian cunt. Italian? I'll take that. Are you Italian? No, just Caucasian. That's, <laughs> Italians are Caucasian. But it's like a different kind, you know? The fuck are you, Swedish? It's like Caucasian with Italian spice on it, you know. But are you English? I don't even know. Actually, I'm actually half Native, believe it or not. My dad's brown. You Native American? My dad, yeah, my dad has like long black hair, dark skin. I look like my mom. They said, what are we going to take from your gene pool? <laughs> I got everything from my, everything from my mom. You know Trixie Mattel's half Native too? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Me and Trixie are like two of the whitest looking people in the franchise. And we're like... Aren't white jeans like dominant or something like that? Is that a thing or did I make that up? Don't, don't, don't trust me. I'm not a scientist. That's just colonization. Colonization! Just colonization. Turning everything to shit. You're number one. It's like colonization is. So yeah, with that we've established that you have no regrets in life except one. But, yeah. But with that, well, actually two, because also this show. But regardless, I appreciate you coming to do it. And for taking the time to do it, I also did want to give you a gift. And thank you for coming all this way across the country to come sit in my chair and be mean to me. But I want to give you something. Is it an inhaler? No, should it be? You good? Though you may have gone through hardships in life, you did take solace in anime. Ah! And I wanted to give you this. Because you've said before in the past that Sailor Moon was like a game changer for you. And I'm so curious, like, what was it about Sailor Moon that was so pivotal and important to you? Wait, hold on. I'm having an emotional moment. I'm not going to cry. No, Sailor Moon was like my, like, just like my awakening in life. I tell people all the time, like, I've never stand anything or, or anyone in my life because mm -hmm. I have a hard time becoming, like, I probably because I suffer abandonment issues. That's depressing. But I have a hard time uh, developing like attachment to stuff and to also like, um, including artists and stuff. So I never have had like an artist or something. I'm like, I'm a big fan, I'm a stan. Like I never become attached to them. But like Sailor Moon for some reason was like the first thing that I was like so obsessed with. And that I was like, oh my God. But also I think it's cause like they were like transforming into like little girls with like mini skirts on and I was like, but that's me. <laughs> 
It's like, that's what I always wanted to be. And now that I am that, mm -hmm. so like, yes. Oh my God, I get to keep this? Yeah, that's for you. Oh my God, thank you so much, Madeline Morphosis. Mm -hmm. This is this is so cute. But with that, so uh, you're about to head back and uh, you're, you're going to all these balls. You got some, a couple shows coming balls. up. What are you trying to say? Exactly what I said. However you take it. However you take the balls. But... <laughs> But where can people find you? What do you have coming up? Do you have like any shows, any ball people can catch you at, any events happening? You have a GoFundMe, which we'll link it down below if you guys want to help contribute to that and you have disposable income. But what else is going on? So I have my, um, to be honest with you, I don't know. For once in my life, I don't fucking know, girl. I, I got to be real with you. Like, I don't know what my next steps are. I know I'm in ballroom and I'm doing that. I'm trying to like... <laughs> become legendary for my category right now. Like, but on some real shit, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't know whether I'm gonna have gigs next year or not. I just know that I'm an artist and I love to perform and, you know, people who see me for who I am, I thank y'all. Uh, and for those who don't see me for who I am because I'm not an older version of myself, that's also okay because I've learned that evolution is important and you kind of just have to be yourself. Um, but I'm working on music. I'm always working on music. Um, I just came out with a mixtape, Femme Queen Rage. Where's the best best place for people to keep up with you? Are you more active on like Twitter, Instagram, Instagram? girl? Instagram? Twitter it has not existed in years, girl. <laughs> What's it called? X. Mm -hmm. X is pussy. I'm tired of Elon Musk, <laughs> and it's X. Yeah, Instagram. Aja the Queen with a K. So the A J A T H E K W E E N. Um, and yeah. That's pretty much it. I'm very active on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I like, and I respond to most of my messages too. So like when people like be messaging me and stuff, I said most, not all. So don't get crazy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like to like have like a social like uh, interactions with my supporters and stuff. I think it's just like very down to earth. So people can find you on Instagram. You can find me all over social media as well. But most importantly, right here on YouTube, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any inter interviews. And subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't. We can get exclusive content and support the channel. And join us next time whenever we have somebody else. They knew I was coming. Huh? They knew I was coming. People on Patreon did. Because a couple people on Patreon, they knew you were going to be the next guest. That's why they got fan questions coming up. Oh, shit. But yeah, till then. Bye, guys. I like frogs.